Good morning. Thank you for the introduction. In this talk, I'm going to show you results concerning the calcium codoping of yttrium aluminium perovskite doped with cerium scintillating crystal. This work has been motivated by a very recent trend in scintillator optimization, mostly in the case of LYSO, LSO, that kind of metrics, and um, garnets, in which the codoping with a divalent ion strongly improves the scintillation, um, the scintillation characteristics. In this case, I present a few data from, where is it? Okay. From some, some recent literature in which we can see a clear reduction in the afterglow of both LYSO and um, this is LUAG uh, serum crystals. The improvement of these uh, of the scintillation are actually related to the formation of serum 4 plus, as we can see in this uh, optical absorption spectra. One might think that the formation of serum 4 plus, plus is actually something that should be avoided. But the fact is that serum 4 plus, 4 plus sorry, can actually still um, take a part into the scintillation process. In the case of regular uh, serum 3 plus ions, what happens is that during the scintillation, the serum 3 plus has to accept a hole and then only later an electron to give out light. In the case of serum 4 plus, this is somewhat um, reversed. So serum 4 plus is just ready to accept an electron, becoming temporarily trivalent giving out light, and then accepting the old, becoming again tetravalent. We are going anyway to hear something more about this process from Martin Nichol in the next presentation. Uh, and the fact is that this process, the, the one involving serum 4 plus, is likely more effective in capturing the electrons, thus lowering the probability of having electrons stored on defect sites. So our question was, can we use the same strategy on ethium aluminium perovskite crystals, or there are some other things that will practically make this um, strategy unusable for, CIRIM, for YAP? So we've grown four different uh, uh, crystals, all, all of them with the same serum concentration, and with four different calcium content, from zero up to 500 ppm. And then what we did is simply the standard characterization you would expect, so optical absorption, steady state, and um, time result, radio and photoluminescence, uh, thermally stimulated luminescence, and some scintillation results. So uh, starting from the optical absorption, what you can see clearly is that for thick samples, we can see exclusively uh, uh, an absorption edge uh, below 350 nanometers, which is shifted toward short, longer wavelength as we increase the calcium content. Uh, up to 300 ppm of calcium, uh, we do see a shift. For higher uh, calcium content, the, the, um, uh, the absorption wall is substantially fixed, but we also have the formation of other absorption bands in the visible, probably related to the formation of other kind of defects inside the matrix. In order, in order to have a better, a clearer idea of what is going on inside this uh, huge absorption band, we've, um, we've measured also some few thin samples. And what we see is that, again, there are the, the really, really clear serum 3 plus related absorption at about 300 to 50 and so on. But we, what we can also see is that by increasing the calcium content, another broader contribution appears and something which is consistent with the shift of this absorption, uh, absorption uh, um, threshold in, for the thick sum. If we calculate the different spectrum between uh, the codop samples and the, uh, and the one doped exclusively with cerium, what we see is that we have a broad absorption. The 
the region between 270 and 320 is somewhat unreliable for the shape since we have, uh, since the spectrometer was saturated. So then this, this absorption here in the UV about two, at about 270 nanometers is likely related to the formation of cerium 4 plus. Uh, unfortunately, if we look at the radioluminescence spectra, what we see is that uh, the cerium emission is at about 350 nanometers, so it is partially superimposed to the cerium 4 plus absorption. And indeed, this is clearly evident since we see a, quite a decrease in intensity as we increase the um, calcium content. There could be also another effect. So Besides having simply reabsorption of the light emitted by cerium 3 plus, we might also have um, charged, um, charge transfer, no, energy transfer phenomena between cerium 3 plus and cerium 4 plus. So uh, we did some thermoluminescence just to see if calcium is actually improves um, or, or disfavor better. The, the trapping probability on defect sites. And what we see is, again, the typical TSL glow peaks for uh, YAP cerium. Uh, there are about four peaks at least. Um, and as we increase the calcium content, all the peaks lose in intensity quite remarkably. And for the 500 ppm, only one peak, the one at about 110 kelvins, remains visible. But the overall intensity is, decrease is of is of at least one order of magnitude. So uh, we did some radio and photoluminescence uh, decays. For the radioluminescence decay, what we can see is that for the, do for, for, for the sample doped exclusively with calcium, we have the typical uh, scintillation decay, so some 25, 26 nanoseconds, uh, followed by a longer one with a decay time of the order of um, hundred of nanoseconds. As we increase the calcium, the long decay component decreases remarkably in intensity, but we also have an acceleration of the um, uh, fast component. So if at the beginning it was something like 26 nanoseconds, at the end uh, with uh, 500 ppm calcium, the decay time is close to 14 nanoseconds. So uh, we were expecting a decrease in, in intensity of the long decay tail. We weren't expecting a so big change in the, in the fast decay, decay component. Um, so that's why we did also photoluminescence decays. In this case, we, for, the, for the sample doped only with cerium, we see the standard cerium decay um, uh, which is of the order of 16, 17 nanoseconds. But we also see an acceleration as we increase the calcium content. And with some beginning of non-single non, uh, exponential behavior for higher, uh, for very high calcium contents. And this might clearly suggest that we do have energy transfer between serum 3 plus and serum 4 plus. So, uh, Concluding with the scintillation yield, uh, what we get is what we weren't, uh, what we actually wouldn't, wouldn't want it. So we, as we increase the calcium content, we have a shift toward the lower channels numbers, um, thus meaning that we are not seeing most of the light, or most of the light is actually dispersed in, um, uh, is actually lost. So, in conclusion, uh, calcium codoping in YAP serum crystal gives somewhat mixed result. On the good side, we have that the presence of calcium in of serum 4 plus reduces the electron trapping probability on defect sites. This is uh, this uh, actually is the cause of a shortened scintillation decay time and reduces the uh, delayed recombination processes. So this results in also in a less evident thermally stimulated luminescence intensity. On the bad side, let's say so, 
a large superposition between cerium-4 plus absorption and cerium-3 plus emission is the cause of energy transfer between among these two ions and possible reabsorption of the cerium-3 plus even light. And this, at the end, results in a substantial re reduction in the radioluminescence intensity and in lighting. So uh, we can still think the calcium codoping as a way to improve the scintillation characteristics by just finding a good trade-off between the two calcium-related effects. Uh, so we, we can possibly think to these materials as fast scintillator with a reduced um, afterglow, uh, but not, unfortunately, not very bright. Uh, I have to thank the International Society Laboratory, IRMAS, and the European uh, Horizon 2020 program, Interim. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions, please? Yes, please. No, no. Thanks, Federico. It's perfectly consistent data. Did you try to measure afterglow, I mean, in millisecond time scale? Uh, no, we don't have the ability to do that. Ah. And second question, have you any idea about the nature of that color center you have shown with, with the absorption? No, at the moment, no. But we, there are suggestions that uh, calcium, an excess of calcium in this kind, this kind of material produces oxygen vacancy. Ah, okay, thank you. Your question, please. Shout out. Yeah, I, th I think I can shout. Uh, uh, thank you for a nice talk. Uh, have you tried to actually check if you have cerium-4 plus on your sample by doing like Zanes or XPS? No, unfortunately not. It would be Sorry. really nice. Mm -hmm. Any question? Yes, please. Could you comment on about the origin of the absorption associated with cerium-4+. In cerium-3+, the absorption is related yeah. to the 4F, 3, uh, 3D, 4F, 4D 5D. transition, 5D transition. In, and what yeah. happens in the case of cerium-4+, but there is no F electron? Could no, you there are no F electrons, but what you, you can have is the charge transfer from uh, a ligand to the cerium. This is quite well known as, as a mechanism. There are some other... Okay, and the last question, please. <laughs> Sorry, very quick one. Do you know where the um, uh, calcium or magnesium dopes in the structure? Does it go to the aluminium or the yttrium side? Uh, as far as I remember, considering the size of calcium, we might have calcium only on the yttrium side. On the yeah. yttrium? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And the last question. <laughs> yes. George. Thank you so much for your very, kind, very nice uh, presentation. Did you see a difference between emission spectra without calcium and with calcium? Well, in radioluminescence, we do see some differences, but unfortunately, the spectra are not corrected, so I'm not really able to... Where are they? <laughs> uh, here. There are some differences, but I'm not really going to comment on this. If we look on the photoluminescence instead, which still are not correct, but we have actually the same um, spec spectral emission. No, we don't see any shift to the red. No, no. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you all presenters. And uh, now we are going to conference court.